Here I am unscrewing the last of four bolts which secure the Pyrex test tube to the aluminum support column. These are one inch long number 6-32 bolts. Their main job is to squeeze three orange rubber washers tightly up against the aluminum support column by applying pressure to the large steel washer. Normally gravity would cause this test tube and steel washer to fall, but all the heat and pressure have caused the orange rubber washers to stick to the support column as well as the large steel washer. This steel washer has four holes drilled through it. Each hole is one eighth of an inch in diameter and is about seven eighths of an inch apart from the next hole. The outer diameter of this washer is one and three quarters of an inch and the inner diameter is eleven sixteenths of an inch which is just large enough to fit the Pyrex test tube through. The outer diameter is five eighths of an inch. These orange rubber washers have the perfect inner diameter to fit tightly around the Pyrex test tube. It's important that everything is airtight or this engine won't run as well as it could. The outer diameter of one of these rubber washers is one inch and the inner diameter is nine sixteenths of an inch. The first rubber washer is really just a spacer. The other two create a tight seal around the Pyrex test tube. This Pyrex test tube is four inches tall. The outer diameter is five eighths of an inch and the inner diameter is one half inch. Inside of the Pyrex test tube is steel wool and some stainless steel scrubber material. The weight of the metal material is eight grams. The weight is not important, but the volume of the material makes a difference in the engine's speed. The bulk of the metal material stops at three inches and it completely stops at three and a half inches. I started using this steel wool I bought at the hardware store, but it has some sort of oil on it that creates smoke when you heat it up. So I'm switching over to the stainless steel scrubber material I found online. Here's a better look. The stainless steel scrubber material is great because it doesn't create smoke when you heat it up, but the steel wool is easier to compress. Too much air in the Pyrex test tube will slow the engine down. Let's take a look at the flywheel. To take off the flywheel, we need to remove this graphite piston. This piston is connected to the flywheel by sliding this bearing onto the brass rod sticking out of the flywheel. This piston is part of an actuator I got from airpot.com. On one side it has a ball joint which allows the connecting rod to rotate easily. At the other end I added a bearing to reduce friction. It's important to handle the piston carefully since a little dirt on the graphite can slow down the engine considerably. This flywheel fits nicely into two bearings that fit tightly into the flywheel support column. There's nothing really holding the flywheel into the flywheel support column, but I have drilled some holes in the flywheel shaft for a cotter pin. This flywheel is made out of steel and has an aluminum shaft running through it. The diameter of the flywheel is three inches. Its thickness is one eighth of an inch. The aluminum part of the flywheel is one and seven sixteenths of an inch long. It has two diameters. The skinnier part is three sixteenths of an inch in diameter and is one and one quarter inch long. The thicker portion is a quarter of an inch in diameter and is three eighths long. The brass pin sticking out of the flywheel has two diameters as well. It fits into a one eighth inch hole, but the part sticking out of the flywheel is one sixteenth of an inch in diameter and sticks out about one quarter inch. The distance from the center of the brass pin to the center of the flywheel shaft is seven sixteenths of an inch. That means the graphite piston travels seven eighths of an inch. The weight of the whole flywheel is 124 grams. Let's take a look at the flywheel support column. This support column is made out of wood and is two and seven eighths of an inch tall. It is a square piece of wood. Each side is one inch wide. These bearings fit tightly into the flywheel support column. One has been glued in place, but the other just fits tightly in there. It's really easy to knock these bearings out of the flywheel support column. I knocked one bearing out trying to insert the flywheel shaft and it chipped away some of the wood. That's why you see these paper shims. I need a less permanent way of holding these bearings in place. Okay, check out video two for the rest of the details.